Hi, this is Mike Fauché. Ever wonder how to expand your NAS units, put in larger drives, or just replace the drives that are in there without messing things up? Stay tuned, I'll show you how to do it. As always, don't forget to subscribe and set that notification bell so you'll be notified of all future content. Hope you enjoy the video. Okay, let's get right into how to how the process works. So the first thing we're gonna do, let me go back to the beginning here. And let's go over to storage and snapshots. And we're going to go over to storage and snapshots here. And we're going to click on manage. And you can see the RAID group one here. It's got three disks. They're already six terabyte drives. And under manage, there's an option here to replace disk one by one. So we're going to take that option. And again, you can do this with the same size drive or you can put a larger drive in there and at the end you'll have the option to actually expand the capacity. Um, um, let's go ahead and start. Hit replace disk one by one and it gives you a listing of your disks. So I'm going to select the first one and I'm going to hit change. And it says please remove this drive. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and pull the first drive out. But to load this, this is completely toolless, so I'm just going to pop the, the uh, side rails off of this, like that. And then we're going to actually put the drive in, make sure it's all the way in, because so you can, we don't have a hard time loading these. And then we're going to pop the rails into the side here. And sometimes you have to work at these a little bit because especially on that first side because it needs to lock in the drive carefully. So now it's nice and snug. So now we're going to take and do the other side. So let's do that. And the second side typically goes a little faster because you've got it already lined up. So there you have it. You've got a nice snug drive and we're ready to toss that guy in there. So as you can see, it's detected the replacement drive and it's now beginning the rebuild process. So it's not going to let me do any more and pull out any additional drives until this process gets done. So, it, or rebuilding RAID. so it's going to do a RAID rebuild. I don't know if you can hear the, error or the, uh, the voice commands in the background here, but it's basically keeping you informed of what it's doing. So it's actually doing a rebuild. Um, this process will take quite some time um, depending on how you have your rebuild settings set. Set to resync high priority. So it's gonna actually go as fast as it can possibly go, but my guess is it's gonna probably take the better part of the night. So this will be a multi-day process. It's not gonna be instantaneous. So I'm going to do it one at a time and, and then um, and see what happens at the end. As you can see here, we're getting close to the end. Resync is just about to complete here, so we'll wait just a couple more minutes for it to finish. And then we can move on to the second drive. Completed rate initialization or rebuilding. Don't know if you heard that, but the... Uh, QNAP has, or the QNAP has actually told us it's completed and we should see the software here catch up here momentarily. And there it is. So we've now completed, the RAID has now been resynced. First drive has been completed. So we're now ready to go to the second drive and repeat the process. So we're going to do, um, we're going to go ahead and go back to manage. Replace disk one by one. And we're going to go to number two. And we're going to click on change. And it's telling us to remove the drive. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and pull the second disk out. Um, and just like the first one, we're going to do this while it's powered up and it's a hot swap. So let's go ahead and... Initializing or rebuilding rate. So, don't know if you heard that, but it's telling me it's initializing and rebuilding RAID. And 
we should now be able to see that up on top here. Here's the message that says it's been detected and been started. And here's the rebuilding process. So it's telling me it's going to take 11 hours and 45 minutes to complete. So basically this is going to run pretty much the whole day. And then tonight I'll be able to replace the third drive. And that will run throughout the night. So that's um, the process. We'll catch back up here when the next phase takes place. And, and we'll see what this looks like when it's completed. Okay, looks like we're getting really close to the end here. The third and final drive should be completing here momentarily. So uh, we'll wait for the green light and that will complete the uh, rebuild of all three drives. So it's been a, obviously a, a long process since you've got to do one drive at a time for obvious reasons. You don't want to lose data and you don't want to lose access to the device, which is important as well, especially in a small business or even a home environment where everybody is you know, uh, storing their data to the NAS. Uh, the only thing I will caution you is setting your priority rebuild. Uh, you know, if you do have a lot of users, you might want to not put it on high rebuild priority because it does take a performance hit. Um, it does impact, add some latency and delays to getting your data because it's spending all the time rebuilding. Typically have mine set to high because I'm I want the thing rebuilt as quickly as possible, primarily because when it's in degraded mode, meaning you only have two of the th three drives or three of the four drives, whatever the case is, um, you're more vulnerable to data loss at that point. So my intent is to get that drive replaced and rebuilt as quickly as possible. So I would rather suffer a performance hit over, you know, a, a day or so than to enhance the risk. Completed right station or rebuilding. There's our, our completion mode. It's now complete, ready, and back in 100% health. So that basically completes the drive replacement. My expansion is going to come from adding one additional drive. And obviously I did that for economical reasons. It would have been better to go to 8 or 10 terabyte or 12 terabyte drive. But to replace all three of those at one time is a big chunk of money. So this was far cheaper uh, for me to go. And it buys me some spares for my other NAS units, as I mentioned earlier, because, you know, I, I use them all the time. They all three of them get used all the time. So I suspect, you know, and I have had in the past drives go bad and it's kind of nice to have a spare just to take out and put in. So now I've got three of them and my primary NAS has been upgraded to a slightly faster drive and um, certainly fresh ones because they've been running for a while. All right, um, I think that's about it. Okay, before we move on, I did want to mention something I neglected to mention in the very beginning, and that's how actually how you change your RAID sync priority. So, um, and this applies to the entire RAID group or multiple RAID groups, depending on how you have your NAS configured. And it's a global setting, so it's going to impact the entire RAID group. It's not a drive by drive setting. And it's really simple. You just go to global settings. You select the RAID group or the storage pool, and this is your options here. You have uh, service first, low speed, the default, which is medium speed, and then the resync fast, which is high speed, and that's the one I've been using. So I hope that clears that up. Um, again, you have to decide which is best for you on how patient you are. And slower that you go, the more performance you get, obviously, but the longer the process takes. Um, I can't give you specific numbers, but I can tell you that at the fastest, my six terabyte drive, as you saw from the video, takes in a neighborhood of around 11 hours or so, 10 to 11 hours. So that would go up significantly. So you kind of have to set it how you want. That pretty much completes the process of disk replacement. I'm going to do a separate video on on expansion um, by adding an additional drive and expanding the array so you can get that additional storage um, in a separate video. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching and as always uh, don't forget to subscribe. If you have any questions feel free to post them. I try to do the best I can to respond to all the questions that are asked and um, I will see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.